that's example seven of chapter nine, effective stress. And for this example, we are given this setup here. So we have a soil sample inside a tank, and there is an upward of flow. So the water is flowing upward through this uh, layer of sand. And we are given uh, readings. So we know the exit pore water pressure, and we know the the in say the inlet water pressure and the total head loss and we're going to calculate the total stress pore pressure and the effective stress at two points so point a and point b and also we're going to calculate the upward seepage force per unit volume of soil okay uh, so let's look at point um this part a first to calculate total stress pore pressure effective stress first we need to know the saturated unit weight of this soil sample so the first thing we're going to find out, okay, so for part A, so is this saturated unit weight. Okay. So saturated unit weight, for this example, we are not given gamma saturated directly. Instead, we are given the uh, void ratio, E, and the specific gravity, that's Gs. And we're given these two values. Okay. And to calculate the uh, saturated unit weight, there are a couple of different approaches you can take. I'm going to use the phase diagram to calculate this gamma saturated. And alternatively, you can use the relationship, that equation from your textbook that link gamma saturated to E and Gs. So on the phase diagram, we have weight on one side and volume on the other side. And uh, I'm going to assume Vs is 1. So that's the volume of the solid. And since it's a saturated soil sample, so we're going to have water and solid phases. And then um, given this volume of solids is 1, based on this assumption, and we can figure out the weight of solids. So that's Gs unit, that's specific gravity times unit weight of water. Okay. And then we know the void ratio. So this volume of water basically is uh, E. So this. Uh, void ratio E. Then the gamma, where the weight of water is uh, volume water times unit weight. So that's E times gamma water. And then using the basic definition, gamma saturated is total weight over total volume. And you have gamma uh, E gamma W plus Gs gamma W over 1 plus E. So this is basically that relationship, that equation from your textbook, which you can derive quickly from this phase diagram. And then if you substitute E of 0.25 and Gs of 2.67, you get the uh, saturated unit weight of 20.59, and the unit is kilonewton per meter cube. Okay, so that's the saturated unit weight. Then let's look at this pore pressure, uh, total stress, pore pressure, and effective stress calculation at points A and B. So I'm going to use a new slide here. So let's look at point A first. So at point A. Okay. So point A, this is located one meter below the top of the soil layer. And so first the total stress. So the total stress sigma A. So total stress, remember, accounts for everything on top. So it accounts for the water and accounts for the saturated soil. So total stress at point A, we have 0.7 meter of water. So that's 0.7 times gamma water plus 1 meter of saturated soil on top. So 1 times gamma saturated. And if you plug in uh, these two unit weights, so 0.7 times unit weight of water in SI system, 9.81, plus 1 times the um, unit weight of sand we just calculated is 20.95. 20 okay. So the uh, total stress at point A is 27.46 kilonewton per meter square. So that's a unit. And then pore pressure at point A. Okay, so pore pressure at point A. So this is something we uh, derived, discussed in this uh, in the previous lecture. So basically we have 
critical pressure at point A is first part is the hydrostatic component. So that's basically the distance from A to this water surface. Okay. So that's one plus point seven. Okay. So that's one plus point seven. Then we have contribution from the seepage from the upward flow of water. And this is what we derived in the previous lecture. So H over H2 times Z, okay, times unit weight of water. Okay. So in this uh, expression here, small h, so that's the total head loss. So for this setup, small h equals to 1.5, that's small h. And H2 is basically the height or the thickness of this sand layer, so that's H2. And for this example, H2 is 2 meters. And finally, that small z, small z basically is the distance from point A to the top of the sand layer, so that's small z. So now if you plug in those values, so we have 1 plus 0.7 plus small h is 1.5 divided by 2 times uh, z is 1. Okay. Okay. Times unit weight of water 9.81. So that gives us the um, pore pressure at point A, which is 24.03 kilonewton per meter cube, a uh, meter square. And once we have total stress and pore pressure, then effective stress at point A is simply the difference between these two, sigma A minus UA, and that is 3.43 kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so that is the uh, effective stress at point A. And then for point B, at point B, the total stress at point B includes, uh, again, that 0.7 meter of water above the soil layer. So 0.7 times unit weight of water, then times 2 meter of saturated soil on top. And if you plug in, so this is 20.95 again. Okay. So if you plug in these numbers, the uh, total stress at point B 48.05 kilonewton per meter square. And then the pore pressure at B. Okay. So for B, we know the height of water column in the piezometer. So this total distance here, that's basically the uh, height of water column for that uh, of that standpipe at point B. So the um, pore pressure at B is that total distance, which is 2 plus 0.7 plus 1.5. Okay. So that's a height of water column of inside that standpipe at B times unit weight of water. Okay. And this gives us 41.2 uh, kilonewton per meter square. So that's a pore pressure at B. And finally, the effective stress at B, again, difference between total and pore pressure. So that is 6.85 kilonewton per meter square. And then part B of this example asks for the upward seepage force per unit volume of soil. Okay. So the seepage force, so part B, okay. so the seepage force per unit volume of uh, soil, uh, we call that uh, I gamma W. So that's the seepage force per unit volume. and Gamma W, of course, that's the uh, unit weight of water. And this I is the hydraulic gradient. Okay. So this is a hydraulic gradient. And for this setup, it's that total head loss over total distance, so H2. So that's 1.5 divided by 2. So hydraulic gradient is 0.75. Okay. So this is the seepage force per unit volume. So you plug in 0.075 times unit weight of water, 9.81. So we got uh, 7.36 kilonewton per meter cube. Okay. So that is the seepage 
force per unit volume. 